What is this place? A hospital. Since when do hospitals have bolted doors? It's a hospital for people with sick minds. Well, I can assure you there's nothing wrong with me. It is for us to ascertain. I don't like this box. Where are you taking me? What box? What are you talking about? Come and see the wee wonder, the spirit of the cornmeal. <laughs> Come and see the wee wonder, the spirit of the cornmeal. Come on, everybody. Ding Nag? Yes. And what part of the world is this Brob Ding Nag in? I don't know. I was completely lost. I had no compass. A and you say this little girl was carrying you? In the traveling box, yes, that they made me. Look, to understand my predicament, you have to imagine yourself as only as tall as my hand. That is to say, if you were to lie down on the floor, please, I'm not trying to make a fool of you. See how different the world looks? Well, imagine, imagine everything you know is now huge, monstrous. Hush, hush, hush. Psst. If we make too much noise, the sprite may not come out. He's a timid little fella. Mind that none of you look him direct into the eye. He might curse you. Who summons the spirit of the cornfield? Oh. Uh, I do. Uh, I need your wisdom, O oh spirit. Show me gold, and thou shall be told. It's it's my radishes, O oh spirit of the cornfield. <coughs> oh spirit, we humbly beseech you to rid these rotten vegetables of their cursed affliction. Then I pretend to go into this this fit. Like this, you see. Keep the love to bring it falling down, falling down, falling down, on the bridges falling down, my fair lady. <laughs> the spirit has spoken. Your radishes will be the plumpest and the firmest in the entire country. Next. <laughs> And you really believed you were possessed by this spirit of the cornfield, did no, you? No, of course not. You were just doing it to make money. I had sick cows brought before me. I was blessing chickens. I was exhausted. If this life was so terrible, why did you try to escape? I was helpless. Can't you understand? My destiny was out of my hands. That's all for tonight. You'll perform again at daybreak. I am one of the Queen's ladies in waiting. I don't care if you're the Queen herself. I am off sleep. I was wondering if the little gentleman might be for sale. My little fella? My little magician? No, oh no. I'm authorized to offer you a considerable sum. Uh, no disrespect, my lady, but no amount of money is going to part the two of us. I have here 500 pieces of gold. Do you want to take him tonight? I begged the farmer not to part me from Glumpoclitch, the only person who really cared for me. Of course, he quickly agreed, only too happy to see his daughter brought up in the royal household. We traveled with the lady for several hours through rich fields and vast farmlands until we reached the palace. A man will appear, smaller than all others, and he will be a lucky charm, a talisman for crops, bringing strong sunshine and sweet rain for the harvest. Such a man is me. Am I, or am I not, the smallest person in the kingdom? Can any man look up to me? I'm a shrimp, a worm, an ant, a tadpole, a grub. 
Am I short? I'm minuscule. I'm dinky, dainty, diminutive. I'm titty, tiny. I'm so small. Her Majesty. No more riding around on the back of a donkey cart. Here was the queen, and I was taking no chances. I threw myself at her feet, the only part where I could reach anyway, and I kissed her toe a number of times and addressed her in the normal manner. Most glorious empress, oh, adornment of nature, the darling of the world, delight of all your subjects, the phoenix of creation. And this queen, she was also a giant, was she? How many times do I have to tell you they were all giants? Even the dwarf was a giant. Well, Grildrig, it seems you are no longer the smallest man in the kingdom. Look, your majesty. Yes, yes, Lady Grildrig. We have a new jester. Her Majesty and I chatted for a while, and I could tell that she was plainly impressed with such wit and good sense in so diminutive a person. For the first time since arriving in this awful place, I felt amongst equals and knew that from now on I would be treated with respect. He's a monstrosity. I disagree. He's a midget, albeit a uniquely small one. You're both wrong. He's a clockwork toy. I have no doubt we can find the hole in his back if we look carefully enough. Take your hands off me! Please, there's been some terrible mistake. I'm a doctor myself. There's nothing wrong with me. Now, let me leave, please. Note that his eyes are constantly moving and he sweats extremely. Why don't you like being touched? I just don't. I don't have to give a reason, do I? He's very restless. His mood changes all the time, and his speech is eccentric, full of fantasy. From the teeth, I'd say he's a carnivore. Even tiny animals like field mice could overpower him. He likes the claws for, for climbing trees and digging in the earth. Perhaps we should try mating him with an animal of his own size. Perhaps we should not. This is outrageous. Gentlemen, please listen to me. I come from a civilized country which abounds with several million people of both sexes of my own stature, where the houses and the trees and the animals are all in proportion. And I have no trouble feeding myself or protecting myself or anything else for that matter. I am a man just like you. <laughs> that farmer was cunning to have taught him to say all this. You can't keep me here against my will. Where's my wife and son? You may shout as much as you wish in here. It's something we expect. You won't be punished for such behavior. But that, I'm afraid, is where your rights end. if the symptoms persist, rest and warmth are all she needs. I have no more patients today, Mary. We can leave if you're ready. I won't be gone long. Why can't I come? You can come next time. I expect all this to be cleared away before I get home. I wish I could dissuade you from visiting him yet. Please don't expect any dramatic improvements so quickly.
In our country, we also have very high taxes, Your Majesty. Keeps people in their place. We have no taxes. But everyone's bringing you the fruits of their labor. So that they can be divided up between the whole kingdom fairly. Amongst the higher classes, you mean? <laughs> no, we have enough food to feed everybody. A farmer brings in his crop and takes home some of his neighbors. Look, each takes his share and no one goes hungry. But unless some people are starving, how can there be structure to society? What do your ministers say about this? Ministers? Each village sends its oldest farmer to meet with me twice a year, and we decide what's best for the common good. The common good? Yes. For instance, Grildrick's new job is to feed the rotten produce to the pigs. Oh, dear. I hope he doesn't bear me any malice. Grildrick! You're not jealous of our new jester, are you? Oh, my lady, nothing could be further from the truth. Like yourself, I've taken a special shine to the little chap. <laughs> I want to see whoever's in charge now. I demand to be let out. I've got a surprise for you. Shall I open it? Thank you. Yes. Dear little Glumdeklitch, she clearly adored me. She so enjoyed dressing me and undressing me like a doll, even though I could, of course, manage for myself. Oh, Glum, it's beautiful. Does this feel like your home now? Not really. My house isn't quite as big as this. Will you take me there one day? So I can meet your queen and see her great city? Yes, I will. We'll go to the theater. And what'll we do before we go? Tell me everything we'll do. Well, first, we'll walk through the park and bow to all the ladies and gentlemen. Dressed in our finest clothes, of course. The very finest. And then we will sit and we'll take tea. Chocolate. Can I have chocolate? Ah, chocolate, certainly. Very fashionable choice, my lady. And I will buy you presents. Lots of presents. A doll's house. Even bigger than this one. The children will love it. If we're married, we'll have children, won't we? Plum, how old are you? Eleven. But I'm growing very fast. I already have a wife, Glum. Oh. In? In England. You said it was a hospital. This is more like a prison. I don't like it any more than you do, Mary. Some of the patients become disturbed. And it's necessary to keep them securely. Thank God you're here. I've got to get out of this place. You have come to take me home. Well, we, we thought it best you had a chance to recover. Have the doctors seen you, yes? 
Yes, but they don't understand. <laughs> the trouble is they know nothing about England, so they have no idea how intelligent I am. They don't know about England. Well, why should they? They've never been there. Of course! That's what I have to do. Bates, call the doctors right now. I have to tell them everything. Now I know stop treating me like a child. Call them back! Call them back!